So this is the start of part two. So the Warriors get a very close win versus the Shea Gilgis Alexander list Thunder team. And it has led to questions about how good the team really is because the Thunder were not fully healthy. They were without Alexei Pokusevsky, but more importantly, Shea Gilgis Alexander was out. Um, he's day to day or something. But then the Warriors won the game by like two points because they overturned a basket interference call on Draymond Green. Um, the Warriors had Chris Paul, Kuminga, and uh, Dario Sarch were amazing, though. Kuminga had 20, and Dario Sarch had 19. But, yeah, it was very interesting to see them barely beat my Thunder when Lou Dort was their leading scorer with 29 points. So then the um, Derek Lively has been Dallas's missing piece. But really, this season, he's averaging like 7-7 seven and seven as a rookie. He was viewed as a guy that would need to develop in the G League for a little bit. But he was their day one starter, and he has been pretty good. Then Patrick Williams. This is insane. Patrick Williams, the former fourth overall pick in the 2020 NBA draft, is asking, reportedly asking for $200 million a year, uh, not a year, but for a four or five year, $200 million extension from the Chicago Bulls. Williams is only averaging this season like five points and six rebounds a game, and for his career, like 10 points and eight rebounds or something. He's not worth $200 million, and if the Bulls give it to him, they deserve to not even have a franchise anymore. They have been terrible this year, and that is just as much of Patrick Williams' fault as everyone else. Williams has been not that good this year. Then the Pelicans signed Jeremiah Robinson Earl to a two-way deal. He was released by a Thunder – or by – he was traded to the Rockets before the season and released by them in the roster crunch. He was drafted by Thunder, 32nd overall in the 2021 NBA draft out of Villanova. He was pretty decent, big man. Surprising that he only got a two-way deal. They released Kaiser Gates to make room. Gates was undrafted in like 2017, a long time ago, out of Xavier, and he's been in the league ever since. And or he's been in the G League ever since, and he just now got his first NBA opportunity and was released a week into the season. The NBA Cup began last night with a, all 30 teams playing, as far as I know. Um, they will have uh, group play games on Tuesdays and Fridays until the real tournament starts on, like, November 20-something. Um, there were some surprising games. The Thunder game was crazy. Jalen Brunson had, like, 50 for the Knicks. Uh, a few other big scoring outbursts. But, yeah, the NBA Cup is pretty exciting to see the new courts. A bunch of teams were wearing their city jerseys. So it was pretty cool to see. Then the NBA has doubled the occurrences of three-plus team trades in the past four seasons, which is just something I wanted to include in here because it's something new that I didn't know before, um, which is crazy because, like, the James Harden deals have all been three-team deals except for the one that sent him to Brooklyn, which was a four-team deal. So there has been, yeah, there's every single superstar trade really has been a three or four team deal, usually just to get more salary, like the salary to match up more. So that's really the reason because there have been way more superstar trades the last few years than there have been before. And then now coaches will receive bonuses for each win in the NBA's in season tournament that they lead their team to. So they will get like 500K for each win that their team gets or something, I think is the number. And then Wendell Carter Jr. breaks a bone in his hand, which will lead to a lot more playing time for Mo Wagner and whoever else they have on that team. Admiral Schofield might get some minutes at the four. I'm trying to think who their bigs are. It's Wagner, Carter Jr., and I don't really know who else, but he's going to be out probably a month or two. It'll have to the magic will have to play some of their bench guys a lot more and then Victor Wimbanyama has been completely overhyped after his 38 points in the Suns win where Devin Booker almost got a triple double everyone is on Wimbanyama like I don't know what they're doing freaking Andrew Finichel on YouTube he's I respect him he's a pretty good he knows what he's talking about usually but he said by the end of the season Victor Wimbanyama will be a top 10 player in the NBA he might not even win Rookie of the Year. He might not even get um, up there because the Spurs, I think, once they start 
being terrible. They're going to reduce his workload, only playing like 20 minutes a game. And Chet Holmgren's going to be on a way better team, helping them a lot more than Victor's going to be helping the Spurs when it's all said and done. So, yeah, Victor has been – people are saying that he is going to be the better than Jordan. It's not – like, there's nothing to prove that he has any chance of doing that yet. It's way too early to tell if he'll ever be a star like Michael Jordan was. And then we have some major NFL storylines here. Um, the Chiefs are traveling to Germany for their date with the Dolphins tomorrow at like 8.30 in the morning at the soccer stadium. I think it's Bayern Munich Stadium. But, yeah, that is tomorrow. It's going to be a fun game. I think the Dolphins are going to win, even though I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, yeah, the Dolphins are really good. And they're getting Jalen Ramsey back. He's going to be guarding Travis Kelsey. Tyree Kill is probably going to have something to prove against his former team. The Rams elevated this random guy that I've never heard of before, um, Dresser Wynn. He was elevated to the active roster with Matthew Stafford, expected to be a game-time decision. Um, Keenan Allen is nearing 10,000 career receiving yards for the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, then Will Levis is crushing all expectations in his first two career games with the Titans, which is insane because he was viewed as a the fifth overall pick to the Seahawks. He fell to the second round, got dumped by his girlfriend, and then now he came to Tennessee. He's been insane, dominating, and it it makes you wonder if the Panthers should have taken him number one, him or C.J. Stroud, because Bryce Young is definitely a bust. Like, I don't care if it's too early to tell. He has been terrible this year. Um, Will Levis looks like he would have been a better first overall pick for the now. Who knows about the future? In five years, Bryce Young might wake up, and he's like, oh, my gosh, I need to replace uh, whoever I'm sitting behind once he's on the bench. But then Will Levis is going to be more solid until then. And I think he would have been the better pick at number one overall or whatever. Or if C.J. Stroud went one, I feel like the Texans should have taken him two instead of Bryce Young and just let Bryce Young fall to some team that doesn't didn't really know what they were doing. Like the Seahawks could have taken him in five and sat him behind Geno Smith to learn some stuff for a few years. But then Raiders fired Josh McDaniels and multiple assistants. McDaniels, he was in his second year as the Raiders head coach, and they have been terrible this year, so it's deserved. Then they also benched Jimmy Garoppolo for Aiden O'Connell, who is the rookie quarterback out of Purdue. Um, Garoppolo like just might be done. He is getting hurt a lot, and he's not very good this year. It was m- just him playing under Kyle Shanahan that helped him. Then the Falcons have benched Desmond Ritter for Ty- Taylor Heineke. Heineke signed with the team in the offseason um, from Washington, and he has played, I think, one or two games off the bench for uh, Atlanta this year. Then Kirk Cousins tears his Achilles. He's out for the year, like we detailed earlier in part one. He will be probably sitting behind Josh Dobbs now since Dobbs is on the team. And then Bills signed Leonard Fournette to their practice squad. He could be elevated sometime soon. I'm still not scared of the Bills, as you'll see later. We'll see why. And then the Falcons star defensive player, Grady Jarrett, tears his ACL, leaving him out for the year and probably the start of next year. And then the Packers agreed to a four-year, $96 million extension with their star linebacker, Rashawn Gary to keep him around. I think he's a Packers lifer. So then the major MLB storylines, the Rangers won the World Series in five games. Go Rangers. Yes, sir. And then where will Shohei Otani land in free agency? He will be only hitting this year due to the injury to his shoulder. He will not be pitching this year, but he will be pitching next year. I think that a perfect team for Shohei Otani, I think if I'm Shohei, I go to a small market team with a ton of money. I go to the Pittsburgh Pirates or somebody like that that can offer him the whole bank and let him just become the greatest MLB player of all time and just dominate. And then the Silver Sluggers nominees are announced officially. Some of the major ones include Nathaniel Lowe, Marcus Simeon, Glaber Torres, Spencer Torkelson, Alex Bregman, Rafael Devers, Bobby Witt, Aaron Judge, Julio Rodriguez, Kyle Tucker, Salvador Perez, and Shohei Otani. 
Um, I think I can name which team all of them play for. Lowe is a Ranger. Simeon's a Ranger. Torres is a Yankee, I think. Torkelson, I think, is on the Detroit Tigers. Bregman's on the Astros. Devers is, I don't know. Bobby Witt's a Royal. Judge is a Yankee. Rodriguez is a Mariner. Tucker's an Astro. Perez is a Royal. And Otani is an Angel until about two months from now when free agency opens or whenever it is. Actually, I think it's like the end of November. So, And then the Gold Glove finalists were also announced. Um, some of the main ones are Jonah Heim of the Rangers, Ryan Mountcastle of the Rays, I believe. Andreas Jimenez on the Giants, maybe? No, he's on the Yankees. One of them, too. Alex Bregman on the Astros. Correa on the Twins. Kyle Tucker on the Astros. No, 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 no. He's on the Braves, I think. Yeah, no, he's on one of them, too. Julio Rodriguez on the Seattle Mariners. JT Real Muto, I don't know who he's on. The Braves, maybe? Um, Carlos Santana on the Brewers. Nico Horner. Key Brian Hayes, who's on the Pirates, I think. And Francisco Lindor, who is on the Mets, and then others. And then Corey Seager was, of course, named World Series MVP. Next up, the major NCAA men's basketball storylines. The NCAA denied a waiver for 27-year-old DeAndre Williams to play for Memphis again this season. He's been with Memphis since the 2021 season. Um, he was a freshman at Evansville in 2019 but did not play in a game. So Memphis sort of cited that that is a reason he should get an extra year because he got false information or something. And then he was a freshman at Evansville in 2020. And then he transferred and played for Memphis 2022, 2023, 2024. Er, and then he was set to play for them in sixth year this year. But they did not let him. Cooper Flagg is going to Duke, of course. Ade Mara is clear to play for UCLA. He had He's a foreign guy, so he had to get probably like his visa and everything all sorted out. Then former five-star twins, who only ended up being like a two-star this year, Matt and Ryan Buley, who are set to play for Chicago State this year. New D1. I think they're an independent. Um, they are suing the NCAA because they are not going to be able to make money off their name and likeness this year because they played for Overtime Elite previously. Dominique Wilkins' son, um, I forgot his name, but he commits to the University of Georgia. Georgia's doing good, as we will talk about in a second. Kansas State Wildcats star, power four, probably their best player outside of small forward Arthur Kaluma right now. Um, he is suspended indefinitely by head coach Jerome Tang following a bar brawl that led to him being arrested by Riley County police officers. Then West Virginia transfer point guard Kirk Creesa has been suspended nine games for an issue that occurred at Arizona. He was a double-double machine last year. Points and assists for the Wildcats helped lead them with Azulis Tabulis. I don't know what the issue is, but that's just what the headline read. Um, Rutgers player Emmanuel Ogbol, I think he also played football for the school or something. I don't know the whole story, but he chose to play college basketball this year instead of playing for the NFL. Then newly hired Rick Patino, who just got hired back at St. John's. Um, everyone has had such high expectations for the team this year with Patino, who is a legendary coach, of course. Um, they lost to defense D, D2 school pace. In a scrimmage, 63-59, to 59, which is insane. West Virginia's player transfer from UConn, Acock Acock, collapses on the court. He's back at home now. Xavier signed Sean Miller to a two-year extension. Five-star prospect Asa Newell commits to Georgia, which is what I was talking about earlier. They have some good stuff headed for them. He is for next year. He's a potential lottery pick in the NBA. Yeshiva University who is a all-Jewish D3 basketball team, is set to play through the Israel war with Palestine. Um, it's probably some tough times for all of them. And then Zach Eady is picked as a unanimous All-American, according to multiple sources and everything. Duke extends John Shire through the 2029 season. Of course, their head coach, and I believe he's a former player, shooting guard or small forward or something with the 2010s teams. Uh, Mike Boynton believes the NCAA owes Oklahoma State an apology 
since they got banned from the 2022 NCAA tournament due to Cade Cunningham recruiting strategies, which included potentially paying him and hiring his brother or uncle or something to work for the school. And then my preseason All-American team right now, um, I have Max Amos, Tyler Kolek, Amos from Texas, Kolek from Marquette, Kyle Felpowski from Duke, Armando Baycott from UNC, and Zach Eady from Purdue. And then the hottest NBA teams right now, I didn't finish this, but I chose the Warriors, Celtics, Bucks, Mavericks, and Nuggets. And then after this, there's two more slides left. My NBA power rankings right now, as of 11 4 23 at 12 30 p.m., I had the Boston Celtics at one, the Milwaukee Bucks at two, Denver Nuggets at three, Golden State Warriors at four, Dallas Mavericks at five. So that's like my top tier teams, my top five. And this is based off of how they've been playing so far this year, not based off their roster, or else the Clippers would be like two. Then we have the Sixers at six, Pelicans at seven, Clippers at eight, Lakers at nine. Hawks at 10, Pacers at 11, Timberwolves at 12, Heat 13, Kings, Suns, Thunder. Thunder are 3-3, three and three, but they've had a really tough stretch of games lately. Um, Spurs, Nets, Magic, Cavs are all the way down at 20 with the Knicks at 21 uh, because they have been struggling really bad this year. I think they're outside of the play-in tournament right now for the East. Raptors, Jazz, Rockets, Trailblazers, Bulls, Hornets, Pistons, Hornets, and then the Grizzlies, who are 0-6, I have as the worst team in the league. And then my NFL power rankings. This is the last thing. Um, Eagles at 1, Dolphins, Chiefs, Lions, Cowboys, Ravens, Jaguars, Bills, San Francisco 49ers, Seattle Seahawks, Steelers, all the way up at 11. They've been pretty good this year, 5-3. and three. Bengals, Jets, who I still really like this year. Vikings, Falcons, Saints, Rams, Buccaneers, Browns, Texans, Titans, Chargers, Broncos, Packers, Raiders, Patriots, Colts, Put Raiders twice on accident. Uh, Bears, Cardinals, Giants, and Panthers. That means I'm probably forgetting a team, but we're not going to try to figure that out now. And then one last look at some of the college football scores. 7-0 at the start of the second for Indiana and Wisconsin. 14-14 for Arkansas and Florida. 10-6 for Clemson over Notre Dame. Um, 56-3 with a minute left in the third quarter for Tennessee over UConn. 23-20 23-20 for Florida over Arkansas. 19-10 for Michigan State over Nebraska. 17-0 for Temple over Navy at the start of the second. Virginia up on Georgia Tech, 7-3. UNC up on Campbell, 45-7 with the start of the fourth. 17-14 for Indiana over Wisconsin. 14-3 for Utah over Arizona State at the end of the first. Start of the fourth, Clemson up 31-23 on Notre Dame, and then Kansas State lost to Texas 27-14. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I will leave a – or no, start of the fourth quarter. Um, I will leave a link to the slides in the description below. This should go up um, at the end of the day today on Saturday. And I will also post the other one the part one at the same time. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're still watching and peace.